All right, our other part of the discussion this week centered around um, these three values from your distribution menu second vars takes you to the distribution menu DISTR normal PDF normal CDF and inverse normal okay this was um, the thing I asked you to research All right, normal PDF what that gives us is the height above these particular values in a normal distribution so if I wanted to find what is the height above 2 in the standard normal distribution I could type in or negative 2 I could type in negative 2 right, and in the standard normal distribution the mean is 0 the standard deviation is 1 All right, and I hit enter and the height is 0 0.05 roughly 4 so that means if I move up from negative 2 on the x-axis and when I hit the curve when I actually hit the bell curve that height will be 0 0.054 okay so normal PDF that gets height above this first value when the bell curve has a mean of this and a standard deviation of this alright and then CDF going down one so if I did normal CDF normal CDF takes in two numbers lower number upper number and if you return uh, if you give two numbers negative two comma negative one what it returns is the area between those two so negative two comma negative one I get 0 0.1359 roughly to four places so that means that area right here between negative two and negative one right, is 0 0.1359 roughly okay that's what normal CDF does now what inverse normal will do is it'll take in an area to the left of a z-score and it'll return the z-score that has that area to the left of it alright so the z-score that has an area to the left of it of 0.75 is 0.6745 right, right here which is a little bit between 0 and 1 a little further to 1 than 0 okay so that's what inverse normal does area to the left of the number Right, and it'll return the z-score that has that area of that number okay now if you are not dealing with a standard normal distribution it all still works meaning I could use my calculator and I could go into the normal CDF and I could tell it in any two numbers here I could go 75 comma 110 but then after the lower number and upper number you tell it the mean and the standard deviation. The standard deviation here is 15. All right, I hit enter. Lower number 75, upper number 110, mean 100, standard deviation 15. And I get roughly 0 0.7. All right, so there's that 0 0.6997, roughly 0 0.7. And that's between 75 is my lower number, 110 is my upper number. Okay, mean, that's the number in the middle, standard deviation 15. And that's the area between the two okay so that's what normal CDF gives no matter the distribution standard normal just making uh, standard normal just you're you're dealing with the standardized scores um, if you have a non-standard normal you just have to tell it what the mean and standard deviation are okay now remember if you don't do that if you leave these last two off Right, you're going to get usually zero because it thinks if you leave the last two off it thinks that you're back here in the standard normal because by default it, um, it's it's assuming if you don't put anything in for those last two numbers if you only give it a lower and an upper and don't give it the mean and standard deviation it's assuming these two are zero and one for the mean and standard deviation because it's assuming the standard normal well think about where 75 and 110 would be in the standard normal distribution all right here's two here's three there's no more height uh, uh, above the curve really so 75 and 100 uh, and 10 are way 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 over here to the right way over here to the right that would mean 75 standard deviations above the mean and 110 standard deviations above the mean so they're so far out there above the mean that there's no area literally between those two numbers okay so you gotta remember 
if it's a non-standard uh, distribution, is you have to give it the mean and standard deviation. Otherwise, your calculator can't standardize it and get back to the standard normal where all these probabilities are being computed. All right, and then just one more example with this old data set. We can use inverse normal here as well. So, all right, so let's say I want to know what the 80th percentile for IQ scores are. This, this is the IQ score distribution if you didn't recognize it. But mean of 100, standard deviation of 15, that's a, a common uh, IQ distribution or standardized intelligence distribution. Or, you know, it could be read as uh, find the IQ score that, that cuts off the top 20% of IQ scores from the bottom 80%. So either way, you know, whatever way it's worded, uh, find the top 20% of IQ scores or the, the cut score for the top 20%, the 80th percentile. Um, if I'm looking for a number on the number line, if I'm looking in this case for an IQ score and I know percentages or area, that's the job of inverse normal. And remember inverse normal always only takes an area to the left, so I need to put in the 0.8 of these two numbers that I have the choice between 0.2 and 0.8 I would choose the 0.8 because that's the area to the left All right, and then tell the mean of 100 standard deviation of 15 All right, and then there's my number 112.62 roughly to two decimal places alright and there's the inverse normal in there now so Basically, and you've probably seen from the videos from last week, the ones we're going to use in this course mainly are inverse normal and normal CDF because we're going to be concerned with what's the probability of this or this happening. Remember, area is probability. So when we're asked probability questions, we need to find the area between two numbers or, you know, in like in this case, we found this to be the 75th percentile. Uh, to check it, I could use normal CDF, negative 99999 comma and then plug in this number point six seven four five alright and then there's point seven five and then some zeros because of the rounding we get not exactly seventy five percent but pretty darn close alright so um, normal CDF finds area or probabilities inverse normal finds the um, number that has that area to the left or to the right if we modify it. Um, but then normal PDF, the other one, we don't really use it that, that much in this course. I mean it could be used for graphing. Like to give you an, uh, an example, I could press Y equals and then I could, to graph this exact bell curve, I could type in second bars normal PDF Alright, and since we're graphing, we pick X to be our variable. And then our mean is 100. Our standard deviation is 15. Alright. And then to actually get it to show up, you have to change your window. So after you press window, what I'm doing here is I'm going to put in the mean, minus, and then I'm going to uh, subtract four standard deviations and add four standard deviations. That way we see the whole entire bell curve. Alright, so the mean minus four standard deviations, the mean plus four standard deviations, 15 is a standard deviation. So, I mean, you could have, you know, added and subtracted 60 if you want, but I just want you to see like a generic way to do it. All right, uh, the scale, it doesn't really matter what you put in here. I'm gonna put in um, 15. Usually that's what we'd, we'd put the standard deviation in there, but it doesn't really matter. But just to make the tick marks agree with what you see here, I'm making the scale the standard deviation. All right, the Y minimum. All right, you don't have to do this like I do it, but um, what I normally put in for the Y mean uh, minimum for this is I put in negative a half, and then if you read what I got here, I got normal PDF. So half the normal PDF, the mean is 100, so I'm putting 100 in where the first value goes. So I'm evaluating the height at the mean, which is the highest point, and the mean is 100, standard deviation is 15, but I'm taking half of that, okay, so instead of it going all the way up to the top, I'm taking half, so about right there, and then I'm flipping over the axis because of the negative, okay, and then for the max, I just type in the normal PDF at the mean, 
right? Remember, the mean uh, in a bell curve is the mode. So I type in 10, or sorry, 100, comma, 100, comma, 15. All right, and that gives me the maximum height. And then for the scale, again, you can just put uh, a tenth of this or whatever you want to for the for the uh, Y scale. So you see for the Y scale here, I put 0.1 normal PDF, 100, comma, 100, comma, 15. All right, and then if you graph that, you should get a nice bell curve centered at 100. It goes up and down four standard deviations, so we see all that area. All right now, I want to show you something that's kind of cool here. Um, if I press trace, this is giving me PDFs. All right, so all those values for Y, those are the normal PDFs for these X values, and it's giving me that curve. Now, we just found here that the area from 112.62 all the way up to uh, the right end is 20% roughly. So I'm going to show you how to do that on your calculator. This this is calculus. It needs calculus. So in calculus, you learn that the area underneath the curve is found using this symbol. This is called integration. But the definite integral, if you hit enter there, you can tell the lower number. So our lower number is 112.62. And an upper number. Now the only thing is we can't use, oops. Sorry, delete, enter, and then upper number. We can only use what's on the screen. Okay, this goes up to 45 here, but remember we went one more. We went four standard deviations on the calculator, so I can go all the way up to 160. So I'm going to type in 160. And then when I hit enter, it'll actually shade that curve, and it'll give me an approximation of the area, so 0 0.2000. So I roughly... 20%. Okay, so that's um, uh, your calculator's PDF feature at graphs, and then we can find these same probabilities using the calculus menus that are on there. Again, this last one's a calculus based menu, but you don't need to be able to do that for our class. Okay, you just need to be able to use normal CDF and inverse norm and have an idea of what it is that you need to find the area of under the curve, but you're going to use CDF to find that area. You don't need to use PDF, graph it, and find the area like we did here. Okay, Just be able to use CDF.